Many photographers are really scared to get it wrong. And I say wrong in inverted commas because there isn't a right or a wrong. And I'm gonna say more about that in a minute. The thing is, every single one of you has the potential to fulfill your photographic dreams, whatever they may be. But there's a dream killer out there and that can stop us dead in our tracks. And the crazy thing is, this dream killer's not even real. Many of us are so afraid to get it wrong we never take the actions needed to fulfill our potential. We hide this by telling ourselves we just need to know a little bit more before we actually go and try it for real. Is a DSLR or mirrorless camera best? What lens should we choose? Maybe we should choose a 70 to 200 and then we'll go off into a tailspin as to which 70 to 200 is the best one to buy. We'll waste hours reading forums and comparing brands and seeing if we can possibly get one for 20 pounds less. Now, if your stuff's starting out, I promise you the camera kit won't make any difference. Your camera kit doesn't take the photos. What it does is faithfully record whatever combinations of light, composition and the settings you choose to give it. Every week I get asked, what's the best focal length for a portrait? Which shutter speed is best to photograph a car? If I use this or that lens from a particular angle, will I get the shot that I want? I don't know because it depends on what you want to achieve. The question here is, why aren't you experimenting and seeing what works for yourself? Why not get out there, try some stuff, give it a lash? It's because we're scared of failure. Many of us want an absolute 100% certainty guarantee. It'll work perfectly on the very first try. Now look, professionals who've been living and breathing photography every day for years rarely just take one shot and it's perfect. If you've done my seven building blocks of photography course, you'll have seen how many test shots you sometimes need to make, especially when you're starting out. We also worry about what people will say or think about our images. You know, you show someone something you like and they say, yeah, that's all right. And what we hear or imagine we hear is possibly a note of disappointment in their voice. And then we start to think, maybe I'm not that good at this. Worse still, we worry about what we will say or think about our own images. We're scared we'll take a crap photo and then become disillusioned with our potential and give up on ourselves. So we procrastinate. The weather's not perfect, the car needs cleaning, the sofa needs to be sat on, or we do endless more research, which is very sneaky indeed, because that's procrastination in disguise. We want everyone, including ourselves, to love our photos. And when we don't get that, we feel like a failure. We start to believe that maybe we're not that good at this after all. An okay kind of photo is the best we can hope for. And that's not a very powerful belief to have about your potential as a photographer. But here's the thing. It's only a belief, an opinion. It's just a thought or a feeling. It isn't real, it isn't the truth, but we mistake it for cold hard fact that's written in stone. Now I want you to really listen to what I'm about to say. I want you to consider that success is the ability to go from failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. So Winston Churchill said that. But what is failure? It's not getting what we want or what we expect to get. And that's just more thoughts and opinions, right? So what would happen if we changed our thinking? What if we started to think of our images as experiments to see what would happen? Maybe if we do this or try that. Now I promise you, you'll start to feel good about yourself if you do this because you're not procrastinating. You're doing, and as you do, you'll learn and you'll grow and you'll get better images because they'll just be a byproduct of the growth. As your photos improve, you'll start thinking, hey, I did that. You'll feel good about yourself. You'll have more belief in your potential. And as your confidence in that potential grows, you'll be inspired to take more actions. Actions like really looking at light, shadows and highlights, trying several different angles with your camera, planning the best time of day to visit a location based on light, maybe brighter or darker exposures and all that good stuff I've been teaching you. By the way, notice how none of these actions have anything to do with your camera and everything to do with you. Better results can only reinforce your belief in your potential, so you take bigger, more challenging actions and get even bigger results. Now these grow your belief in your potential and the whole thing starts spinning round and round in a circle, feeding on itself and before long you're flying. 
The first step is to stop being afraid of what you or someone else perceives as a failure. When something doesn't turn out how you want it, ask yourself some powerful questions. Why did that happen? What would have happened if I'd done this or that? When can I have another go at it? Something you need to realize is that mistakes are brilliant things because they are an essential part of learning. We need them. They are opportunities to find out what went wrong and avoid doing it again. By changing the way you think about your potential and recognize that fear of failure isn't a tangible thing, you automatically get results as byproducts. Now, you'll never please everyone. If someone doesn't like your image, then they don't like your image, and that's their opinion. I learned a valuable lesson about this when I was commissioned by Bournemouth Airport to do a dramatic looking upright image for a magazine cover that had to have space for overlaid text and clearly said, Concord comes here. Now I was scared because airports are generally messy places with trucks and sheds and other aircraft cluttering the place up. Also Concorde doesn't fit an upright shape and it was a dull overcast day as well and that wasn't helping. And sure enough, dull light makes for a dull image. So I ended up photoshopping my favorite, adding a crazy new sky and a girl on the steps, the sun and even lens flare coming over the fuselage. Now looking back on it, it was horribly overdone, but hey, it was a long time ago. But here's the thing. The image not only won a Master Photographers Association Award, it won a National Commercial Award from Fuji. The prize was a week at photo training overseas, the event which happens each year on Cyprus. The client, they didn't like it. They chose the one I almost didn't show them because I thought it was dull. So stop letting fear of failure stop you. Stop researching and procrastinating endlessly and get into action because effort in equals effort out. Watch some videos, get some of my courses, but most importantly, go out and put theory into practice. And when something doesn't turn out the way you want it to, it's a golden opportunity to learn from it. Go get them, tiger. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos. Or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.